Hi guys and welcome back to another 10 facts. This time it's for Zelda, which was requested by Craig, aka Super Quintendo. So as always, I'll leave a link to his channel in the description and thanks again Craig for the suggestion. The Legend of Zelda is a fantasy action adventure game series created by Japanese games designers Shigeru Miyamoto and Takashi Tezuka, primarily developed and published by Nintendo. The series gameplay incorporates action, adventure and puzzle solving elements. One of Nintendo's most well-known and highly praised franchises, the series centres on Link. Link is often tasked with rescuing Princess Zelda and the Kingdom of Hyrule from Ganon, who is the principal antagonist of the series, although other game worlds and antagonists have appeared in several Zelda games. The game's plots commonly involve a relic known as the Triforce, a set of three mystical golden triangles. Since the original Legend of Zelda was released in 1986, the series has expanded to include 18 entries on all of Nintendo's major game consoles, as well as a number of spin-offs. As of 2015, the series has sold 75 million copies. Personally, I grew up playing Link's Awakening on my Game Boy, and it remains my favourite Game Boy game, as well as my favourite entry in the series, followed closely by A Link to the Past on the SNES. I'm not a huge fan of the 3D Zelda games, such as the hugely popular Ocarina of Time on the N64, I know, cue pitchforks, which many cite as their all-time favourite game, instead preferring the 2D style, personally. For this reason, I love the recent 3DS game A Link Between Worlds. Being one of Nintendo's most loved franchises, chances are you've all heard of Zelda and played at least one game in the series, but did you know these 10 facts? In Japan, the original Famicom game was called The Hyrule Fantasy, with The Legend of Zelda being the subtitle. This moniker actually seems far more sensible, as the Hyrule Fantasy is a better way to describe the adventure. The game is essentially about exploring the world of Hyrule, rather than being about Zelda, Link, or any one character. For whatever reason, the subtitle became the game's full name when it reached the West, becoming simply The Legend of Zelda on the NES and the name the Hyrule Fantasy was eventually phased out in Japan as well. Upon completion of the original Legend of Zelda, the player was rewarded with an entire second quest. This was not merely the same game with a ramped up difficulty, as with many other games, but an entirely different game complete with new dungeons. The bonus quest arose because once the game was almost complete, the developers found that the game used up only half of the available space on the cartridge, as Nintendo liked to make use of all the available cartridge capacity, Zelda co-designer Takashi Tezuka decided to add in the second quest, essentially doubling the game and thus filling the remaining cartridge space. Want to play the second quest without first completing the main game? Simply load up Legend of Zelda in your NES and enter Zelda as your name. The hero of the series, Link, wears green, has pointy ears, has a fairy companion, and has no parents. Indeed, Miyamoto has confirmed that Link is based on the Disney version of Peter Pan. Link's damsel in distress, Zelda, is based upon Zelda Fitzgerald, wife of the great Gatsby author F. Scott Fitzgerald. Miyamoto wanted the princess to have a mysterious quality, and thought that Zelda Fitzgerald was the ideal muse. He also thought the name Zelda sounded cool, despite being apparently difficult for the Japanese to pronounce. The late actor Robin Williams named his daughter Zelda after the game's princess, and even expressed interest in voicing Ganondorf if Zelda was ever to make the leap to the silver screen. Many characters in the Ocarina of Time were inspired by David Lynch's bizarre 90s television series Twin Peaks. As a huge fan, Miyamoto wanted Link to encounter myriad strange and noteworthy citizens in the land of Hyrule, this goes some way toward explaining some of the unique characters in the game. The Legend of Zelda was a product of Miyamoto's childhood love of exploration. Shigeru Miyamoto grew up in Sonobe, a small town south of Kyoto. As his parents didn't own a television and having very few toys, he spent his days roaming the countryside unsupervised. When gallivanting around the countryside, he would often find himself lost, stumbling across interesting features. One day, coming across a deep, dark hole, Miyamoto ventured inside, lantern in hand. What he discovered within was an entire cave system. This passion for discovery was the inspiration for the Legend of Zelda series. 
According to Miyamoto, the Legend of Zelda storyline was originally intended to take place in both present day Hyrule and the future. Many elements of the series were initially going to be technological in nature, for example, instead of collecting magical Triforce pieces, the player was supposed to be collecting special microchips. This also serves to explain Link's name, as he was supposed to be the link between the past and the future. The Legend of Zelda was originally planned as a launch title for the Famicom Disk System. Nintendo wanted to take advantage of the rewritable aspects of the discs, so early on Zelda was essentially a dungeon building sim that let you create and share your own dungeons. At some point it was decided that they could make better dungeons than the players could, and the creation aspect was dropped. During the first game, in one of the more memorable quotes from the series, when Link enters his first cave, he encounters an old man who tells him, it's dangerous to go alone, take this, giving him his first sword. Up until fairly late in development, the player actually started with that sword in their inventory. Seemingly this was altered to bizarrely make the game more confusing for players. Nintendo Focus tested The Legend of Zelda before release and many players complained that the game was confusing or that they kept getting lost. Rather than address these issues, Miyamoto instead made changes that made the game even more confusing, including starting the player off without any means of defence. The thought behind this decision was that making Zelda more confusing would encourage kids to share information with their friends, create a sense of community around the game. This idea worked and Zelda became one of the most discussed games in 80s playgrounds. Almost the entirety of the game can be completed without the sword, but not all, as the player will need the sword equipped to defeat Ganon. Nintendo of America had very strict rules regarding religious imagery, but it seems that they broke their own rules for The Legend of Zelda, which had several religious references. Some of these were indeed censored for the Western release, such as the Holy Bible, which was renamed to become the Book of Magic. Despite the name, the Book of Magic still resembles a Bible. Other references made it to the NES release, such as Link's shield bearing a cross. The game almost went with stop music as its main theme. The Zelda title, or Overworld theme, is one of the most iconic pieces of video game music ever created, but it almost didn't happen. The original plan was to use stock classical music, specifically Ravel's Bolero, as the game's main theme. At the last minute, Nintendo discovered that Bolero was still copyrighted, so Nintendo's legendary composer Koji Kondo had to come up with a replacement in very little time. He then incredibly wrote Zelda's legendary overworld theme in a single day. In late 1990, Nintendo Power held a contest in which a randomly selected winner would get their name programmed into a future NES game. The entrants were required to take a picture of their character next to a war mech in Final Fantasy and then send it to Nintendo Power by October the 15th, 1990. The winner was Chris Houlihan, whose name appears in his own secret room in A Link to the Past. Chris Houlihan's room can only be accessed by using one of five methods, the most well known being a series of dashes using the Pegasus boots, starting from the Sanctuary all the way to the Sewer Passageway's entrance. If performed correctly, Link will fall into the underground room. If Link exits the room, he will find himself outside of his house. The room itself contains a number of blue rupees. The room is not part of normal gameplay, but rather a crash prevention measure. It's a fail-safe room that Link is sent to when it cannot determine which room he should be sent to. This happens when the game detects an error in Link's Y coordinate. So there we go guys, that was my 10 Zelda facts. Hopefully there was one or two in there that you didn't know. As always, stick your suggestions in the comments. And thank you very much for watching. See ya.